All right, in section 8.4, you're basically going to do everything that we did in two dimensions in three dimensions. So, whereas before you had two dimensions, you had points that were like x and y, you now have points that are x, y, and z. So, it is very difficult to kind of draw something in three dimensions on a flat piece of paper. So you have um, like a set of axes right here. So like if you want to graph something like the point, I don't know, two, negative four, uh, three. I would, my x-axis here, so I'm gonna go out to two. My y-axis positive is over this way, so I'm gonna go backwards four, so one, two, three, four. So when I graph two, negative four, it kind of looks like it's like right there in a way, all right? And so then I wanna go up three. Well, I have to kind of go like right there, I guess, because that would be like the height if you can imagine it. So you would just kind of label it two, negative four, three. It doesn't look good, it's hard to do, um, but uh, basically, you know, it's just, you just have to do that. Um, and when you're trying to draw the axes off the top of your head, um, you know, usually you make like a little triangle right here, and you make that like X, Y, and Z. And you, X goes back, Y goes back, Z goes down, so you can kind of draw it like that. Um, and you're just going to sketch it. It's not going to look good, but here's another picture of one of them. So everything that you did in two dimensions, um, you're going to do in three. So if this was a vector, I'd go from here to there. That would be my vector, two, negative four, three. Component form, you're just going to have three parts to it, you know, three, three sets of numbers. Um, midpoint or distance formula has three pieces instead of two. Dot product, you're going to multiply three sets of numbers together and add them up. Um, parallel, everything just has a third part to it. Angle between two vectors is going to have um, three pieces, but it's fine. So we're just going to do examples of those things. Um, and down below, it should be pretty, 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 pretty quick. All right, so given two 3D points right here, find the following. So I want the component form. So basically, um, I have a, b. I subtract the x, the y, and the z. So negative five minus two is negative seven. Neg uh, one minus negative four is five. And then negative two minus seven is negative nine. Okay, if I want the standard form, um, that would be uh, negative seven i plus five j. And then the third letter, you guessed it, is k, minus 9k. So basically, um, in this new setup here, i is 1, 0, 0, because it's still 1, 0 in the x direction. j is 0, 1, but you put a 0 there. And k is 0, 0, 1. It is your up and down direction. Okay. All right, so calculate the magnitude. So if I want the magnitude, um, I just do the square root and I square all these parts. So 49 plus 25 plus 81. Ugh, so whatever that is, let me see. So 155. So it just makes your work a little bit more. Find a unit vector in the direction of AB. So basically I take my original vector and divide it by the magnitude, same as I did before. So, um, negative 7 over radical 155, uh, 5 over radical 155, and negative 9 over radical 155, okay? And sometimes you can make that a little bit shorter. You can um, go like this. You can put uh, negative 7, 5, and negative 9, and you can just put it over square root of 155 like that. You can write it a little bit faster if you want, knowing that it'll go to each part graph this vector. So let me try and draw my axes a little bit. X, Y, and Z. So here's X, Y, and Z. All right, so A, B. So I go negative 7, 5, negative 9. So I'm just going to eyeball it here. Negative 7, 5 would be here, and negative 9 would be going down 9, so about there. So I'm going to be going from here to there. So again, really hard to tell on something that's two-dimensional, but you know, you'd use computers and stuff like that. It's easier to make something 3D. But that's the best we can do. And we'll just call this vector negative seven, five, and negative nine. Okay. All right, so find the midpoint of the segment AB. 
So from A to B, remember your midpoint formula, you add things up and divide by 2. So um, 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3 over 2. Because remember your midpoint formula from geometry, you do x1 plus x2 over 2, and then you do y1 plus y2 over 2. Well, now you have a third part, if I could fit it right here, z1 plus z2 over 2. That's my midpoint formula, right? My midpoint. So let me just cross this off. So my midpoint of the segment would be 2 plus negative 5, so negative 3 over 2. Then negative 4 plus 1, so negative 3 over 2. And 7 plus 2, so 5 over 2. It would be a midpoint, though. All right, the length of the segment AB. Well, the length of the segment AB is also going to be the magnitude of AB, but um, you have your distance formula, right? So your old distance formula was this. It was a square root. You did x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And so now you just have z, z2 uh, minus z1 squared. But remember, these numbers are that subtraction. So basically, I can just do use the magnitude answer right here um, because I'm subtracting these values up here and squaring it. So I'm getting um, the square root of negative 7 squared plus 5 squared plus negative 9 squared, which we know from here is radical 155. So the magnitude is the distance. Um, Okay, so over here we're just going to um, do a little bit more practice with that. We're just going to sketch each one and then do some stuff with it. So 3, 1, 0. Let's see. So I got to go 3 over 1 on the y-axis. So here's like 1, here's 1, 2, 3, and then nothing. So actually it's on this flat surface, that xy plane. So there's my vector a. All right, b. I got to go negative 4. So I'm going to go backwards 4. All right, uh, 2 in the um, y direction, so out this way to 2, and then down 5. So I'm just going to put it down here and call that B. Again, it's not looking that good, but whatever. All right, and then 0, negative 6, 4. So 0 for the x direction, negative 6 for y, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's not showing up very well. So 0, negative 6, and 4, so I'll go up 4. All right, so there is that vector there. That's C. Okay. So, um, you know, you can still, I forgot to put it on here, but you can still find, like, the angle between two vectors and so forth. So why don't we do one of those right here? Let's find the angle between, I don't know, vector A and C, how about? Okay. So the angle between... A and C, this angle right there. So remember the angle between two vectors, the cosine of my angle is the dot product over the magnitudes multiplied together, okay? So um, let's do our dot product. So my dot product of these two right here, I'm gonna get zero plus negative six plus zero. So I'm gonna get negative six. The magnitude of A, the magnitude of this one will be the square root of nine plus one so 10. The magnitude of this one, 0 plus 36 plus 4, so 40. So I'm going to multiply those two magnitudes together, so that's the square root of 400, which is actually 20, but anyway. So I go to my calculator, so I'll have my second cosine, make a little fraction, put negative 6 over the square root of 400, which is 20, turns out, and I am in degrees, so there we go. So my angle between those two things is 107.5 degrees. All right, um, so let's calculate each one down here. Um, let's see, 4a minus 2b. So 4a, so it's going to be 12, 4, and 0. 12, 4, and 0 minus 2b. So 2 times b, I'm just going to put it in component form. 2 times that is negative 8. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So subtract these. 12 minus negative 8 is 20. 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 minus negative 10 is 10. All right. 
um, 3C dotted with, t with B. So 3C, let's go ahead and figure this part out. 3C will be 0, negative 18, and 12. Dotted with B, well, B is negative 4, 2, and negative 5. Let's figure out this answer first. So um, there's going to be a number, right? It'll be 0, negative 36, and negative 60, right? So what's that? Negative 96. So that's this part all done. So that's going to be multiplied times double A. So let's figure out double A. Oops, I need three spots. Double A will be 620. Oh gosh, so 90, 76 times 6, oh, so negative 576, um, 96 times 2, so 192, negative 192, and then 0 is always nice. Alright, magnitude of C, so the magnitude of this vector right here would be the square root of 0 squared, negative 6 squared, and 4 squared, so 36 plus 16, Let's see, 46, 52, so radical 52, which is also 2 radical 13. All right, and the last little thing here, we have the equation of a sphere. So um, a sphere, remember we did circles, so if I cover this up right here, that's the equation of the circle that we did like um, in last chapter. So a sphere, just add a third part, and you have your radius. Um, so basically when you know you draw a sphere, you probably draw a circle, and then like do a loop like that and like do a little dotted thing back here. Here's the center. Here's the radius. So that's, you know, a little sphere for you. All right, so I want the equation of the sphere with between these two points right here. So um, these are the endpoints of the diameter. So what I have to do to find the center, so basically what you've been given is you've been given the endpoints of here and here. So we have to find the center point. So that would be my midpoint. So I gotta find the middle of these two, which means I add them up and divide by two. So eight divided by two is four. Negative four plus one is three, negative three. Negative three divided by two is, we'll just say negative 1.5. And then five and negative one make four. Four divided by two is two. So that's my center. All right, so I can start it up. X minus four squared plus y minus a negative 1.5, so plus 1.5 squared, plus z minus 2 squared equals, now I do have to find the radius. Ugh, hang on a second. All right, so I have to find the radius. Um, so my radius is from the center out to either of these points. So I need to find the distance between I'll do these two right here. So my distance between there. So remember my distance between two points is my square root, like my magnitude, right? 4 minus 2 squared, so 2 squared. Negative 1.5 minus negative 4, so that would be 2.5 squared. Plus, let's see, um, 2 minus 5 squared, so negative 3 squared. All right, so 4 plus um, 2.5 squared is um, 6.25 um, plus 9. So let me get my calculator. Let me check that. So 2.5 squared, let me just make sure of that. Yep. All right, so I got 10 plus 9, so 19.25. So actually, I don't really need my calculator. Um, I need my radius, this is my radius, this is my distance between these two points, so it's actually my radius. I need to put my radius squared on the other side, so if I square that, the radical goes away. So that is the equation of that sphere in 3D space. Alright, and there's your problems there, and that is it. Bye-bye.